What is going on, West Family, aka the best family, and welcome to episode three of Flip the Switch. I just flip the switch. Again, this series, this podcast is to provide motivation and guidance to individuals out there like you and me that are people of color, first generation minorities that didn't really have that guidance growing up or people they can turn to. And that is what we are trying to achieve here today, whether it be through the college applications, internships, a professional academic world, we are here to help. And essentially the whole idea and goal here is to take your work ethic to the next level and share advice and stories for you to flip the switch. Today's episode is very, very special. We have our first guest who was a Twitter intern who is now their first full-time and we are just going to share our stories of the whole internship application process little advice that we can give and without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's go ahead and bring on our guest for today's show all right y'all welcome and without further ado our first ever guest how does it feel to be the first guest on this episode on this series man just tell me that dude first of all appreciate you having me (laughs) honored to be the first guest honestly this is it's a pretty good feeling dude it feels awesome um you know, I I I watched I listened to the first two episodes, okay, and I one. love what you're trying to do with this whole flip the switch mentality and kind of getting everyone on board and honestly just helping like the community at the same time, right? So, 100%. honestly, a huge you know big thank you to you for having me, and I'm I'm kind of ready to kind of let everyone know the little ins and outs of internship stuff. Dude, exactly. So navigating that whole world. So, guys, today as you guys are we're talking about internships, and it's only right that I got so. So, first of all, my bad. Go ahead and introduce yourself, and then I'm going to get into our background story. But go yeah, ahead and introduce no, yourself. Good. So, my name is Salman Butt. i from New York. Uh, went to St. John's University in Queens. Graduated in 2019. Hey. And I've been full-time at Twitter for almost a year now. Um, hey. So, quick, like, background on myself. Like, you know, middle, uh, middle class family. First one to graduate. You know, so kind of what you were talking about in your other episodes is like navigating yep. that whole world. It's, it's new. It's different. It's hard. Um, and it brings new perspectives. Um, so that's like a quick little backdrop on me. Perfect. So, guys, I met Salman when we were in San Francisco and I was at first year of law school at Hastings. I met him. I don't even, was that like after Juma or something like that, right? It was after Juma. It, it was during this, Juma, yeah. And this dude comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, I'm an <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a intern at Twitter. If you want to, if you want to come check out the offices, I was like, Oh bro, say less. I'm like, dude, I was like, say less. So this guy was at the time when I was there, we're about the SF. He was interning at Twitter. And now as he just mentioned, he's there full time. And we were talking, literally we're on like a rooftop and we're just talking about the whole internship process. Like this guy's the one who made me basically start my LinkedIn. Do you remember that dude? I do remember that dude. (laughs) I was like, dude, get a hop on LinkedIn. I remember you were getting ready for like your journey for like kind of, Apply. I remember you were saying you want to go apply. You want to apply different schools. You have like yeah. all these like aspirations that you were trying to hit. I'm like, do yeah. the move. We got to do that first. And I remember we were building that out. A hundred percent. So we're basically we're just gonna go ahead and just talk about our stories. You're gonna tell your story. I'm gonna tell yeah. my story about the whole application process. But basically, okay, everybody knows now you are a Twitter intern, and that is guys, that is not an easy feat to accomplish. It is probably one of the hardest things to do, especially at these big tech companies, especially a company like Twitter. But take us through, take us through the application process. Like, how did that work? Yeah, dude. And how'd you do Definitely. it? Where'd you find it? So uh, it's tough. It's, it's a long journey, honestly. Um, when I started off at school, I honestly started off as a, as a um, I want to go into med. I was like, I want to become mm-hmm. a doctor, blah, blah, blah. Three days in, I'm like, I can't do cam. This sucks. Like, I'm not about this life. This is not, I wasn't built for it. Like, this is, this is not what I like. 100%. So I ended up switching my major to finance. And I was like, all right, what am I going to do with this? Um, so, I was, I, you know, when people think finance, like, oh, we're going to go into banking, right? Like, you're yeah. just going to be a bank and go to Wall Street, blah, blah, blah. I had an internship at a bank. I honestly did not like it. Culture was very like uptight, you know, like you can't really be yourself. Um, and at the end of my sophomore year, I was like, let me move into tech. You know, this seems like a really cool field. There's a lot of stuff to do here. And I was like, I really want to work at Twitter. And the reason was I use a platform heavily. Um, yeah. I thought it was a cool platform. There's a lot that goes on there. But the other thing was I, I checked out their career site and I watched the videos of the interns and dude, oh. the internship looked awesome. Like the, <laughs> the way they kind of, the stuff they do, I was like, this looks like a lot of fun. I get to go to Cali for three months. Like I, I need to get it. So I applied cold, right? Kind of yeah. the way most people do is like, you'll go on their career site, you'll see the summer internship or spring or winter through an application. I think it was for the fall time. So let me see what happens. Never heard back. I'm like, okay, maybe it's just because it's fall time, so it's hard. 
I was like, let me, let me apply again. So the, I'm in my junior year right now. Um, okay, so first you so applied was, sophomore you, you, So first you applied, I applied sophomore, sophomore year. year. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I took an L. I was okay, like, all gotcha. right, this isn't, I didn't get it. Okay. Okay. And my understanding was like, you know what? I'm, I'm too young right now. Maybe I need more experience. Yeah. Right. Maybe I just got to wait a little. So I waited till junior year. I was like, let me apply again um, in, in like the, for their winter time. Nothing. Oh, so wait. Like, okay. You applied, applied like twice. Uh, Oh, you applied I again. Applied, like, so twice. now you applied again when you were junior during the winter time. Yeah, so they had like winter internships also. Like, like, oh winter man, internship. okay. Right. So during my so- end of sophomore year and in in between the junior year time, I started to realize like this cold applying is not working. Yeah. I need to figure out how can I finesse like I need to figure out different paths. Like how can I get into this place? Mm-hmm. And this is the kind of mentality you're talking about. Like flip the switch, right? Yeah. You need to figure out a new way to kind of get yourself in. And one thing that was, that kept coming at me is like, oh, all these kids who go to MIT, who go to NYU, who go to all these top tier schools, they're getting it, I'm not gonna be able to get in. Exactly. I'm like, no, nah, I can't think that way, that, that's wrong. Because you're unique in your own way and you have to kind of build your way to try to get in. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me see, what can I do different? And then I started you know, digging in on their website and they had these events that go on. Right. So these are like small little events that you apply for. It's held by university recruiting. And it was like for Black History Month. So they had speakers and they had a bunch of students that they invited. So I applied okay. for this, you know, little two hour event. And um, I kept going to these events. So I got into a couple of them, started okay. meeting people often, more so often. So these events were in New York, New York area, right? And that's where you're So yeah. how did you how did you find these events? Right. So I'm going to backtrack now. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. In, in my soft, so during my sophomore year, one thing that I started to figure out was, you know, like it's hard to get into these top tier companies without mm-hmm. having a network. Like if you cold apply, maybe you'll hear back, but it's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. Um, just like you were saying, getting into like Google, Facebook, right. Even mm-hmm. top tier law firms, marketing firms, whatever it may be. It's not easy. There's a lot mm-hmm. of applicants, right. So you kind of get drowned out. So I turned to kind of link. I was like, let me figure out a way. What did people do differently that I yeah. can do? So you're kind of stalking profiles in a way, right? So when if you if people who are listening, if you do end up doing this, make sure you turn yourself to like not like private. I think it's private it's mode. Called, private right? mode. Yeah, yeah. Private, private mode. Yeah, yeah. That is key. That is key. Yeah. Right. So you go to private. So the first thing that I did was let me look at my at my you know St. John's circle of like LinkedIn people. Mm-hmm. So I started looking up like what events did they attend? Some person attended a Goldman Sachs like virtual series. What is that? Let me look into it. Oh, it's a whole program. I apply for it. I ended up getting in, right? You, and then you start building your resume slowly. Yeah. So there's like these little programs that people attend or e- even certifications that people do, right? And I started to see that people are doing small things on the side to kind of build their profile. Mm-hmm. So I, I kept looking at different people's profiles and then i went outside of st john's i looked at people from harvard right and what grade and what grade were you in what grade are you at this time you're a junior you're in junior year this this is end of sophomore year end of sophomore year yeah okay so this is towards the end where i'm trying to realize i gotta build a profile i gotta attend these events okay so into my summer of sophomore year i I found like two events one was like a bloomberg externship applied for those and you end up getting i ended up getting into those kind of got some cool insights but that was me building my resume Mm mm-hmm so it was just me honestly just stalking profiles right you look up people you're like what's this person doing how did they get to where they are now yeah yeah. right and you understand that they slowly built their way there and that's when i started to realize like i gotta build my way there like you gotta create your own path and start to understand like this is a lot of experience so once i started going to a lot of these programs started building my profile and kind of like my resume i was like all right let me start networking with people at twitter and that's yeah. when I started attending these small little events that they held, right? So only reason I knew about these events was because I knew other companies have small events. Gotcha. So you go to the profile of a company, go to the career site, and you'll start finding small events that they hold. Okay. And I'm assuming right now these events are probably going to be virtual because of quarantine and whatnot. Yeah. So it makes it honestly easier to network in a way, right, if they're going to hold these virtual events. So I ended up going to Twitter. I was like, let me see what's going on. I probably attended two events didn't really have much luck i met people and this is early in my junior year uh like okay. in in uh in the fall semester okay met two people i was like i need to i need to get in and then there was a third event happening in in february it was for black history month i think it was like february march time 
and I was really close to not going. This was their last event, and I was like, oh, I'm tired. Shit. I don't feel like going. It's winter. It's snowing here in New York. Dude, winter <laughs> yeah, yeah, sucks. Yeah. It's cold. Okay. I was like, I don't want to go. Last minute, man. I was like, you know what? Let me go. Let me go. I ended up going. Bunch of students, dude. A lot of, probably 150 students there. Okay. Um, they had a speaker series set up, and then after that, you'd network. And I saw people from all over NYU, like people came from like MIT, like people came out for the event. I'm like, this is pretty cool, but it's also intimidating. It's kind of yeah. scary. Mm-hmm. And then I met an engineer he's like, oh, what are you trying to do? I'm like, I'm in finance, trying to find an internship on the finance team, really want to come. He introduced me to someone who was an MBA intern on the finance team. And she was the one person who put my resume down in front of the manager. Dang. So because of her. That one person that I met at this event that I wasn't going to go to, right? I, I was able to get, I got an interview. because. And she was an intern at that time? She was an intern, which even makes the story crazier, right? She's not even full-time yet. Wow. She's an intern. So she was, wow. like, she was an MBA intern from Columbia. And she's like, yeah, you know, I entered on the team last summer. I'm sure, you know, like I can throw my resume, I can throw your resume yeah. down for you and kind of see what happens. I'm like, yeah, sure. So she's like, give me your email, just, you know, uh-huh. shoot me a quick little blurt about yourself, this and that. So after the event, I'm like, ah, oh, cool. I met someone. Hopefully this works out. Yeah, yeah. A couple of days go by and I just did an email. I was like, ah, oh, I don't know if it's worth it, blah, blah, blah. It was just that mindset where I'm like, you know, I don't know, there's a bunch of kids. It's intimidating, right? You kind of yeah. go through the syndrome where you're like, oh, like, am I good enough? Am I not good enough? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Let me send her a resume. What's the worst that can happen, right? The worst thing that can happen is you don't hear back. So what? Mm-hmm. Send her my resume. She's like, ah, oh, thank you. I'll forward it, blah, blah, blah couple probably a month goes by i'm like ah nothing and then it's like end of march so you followed up but did you follow up with her on via email oh so no, you I waited a whole what, so, wait I so waited, you waited a whole month waited a whole month i waited a whole month and that's actually a really good point you brought up and did you send the resume follow-up. so you you send the resume a month later you're saying no i sent her my resume like two three days after that was insane. Okay, i gotcha, waited gotcha. i waited a month until i actually heard back Okay, gotcha. So right? then March. So okay, well, Ma- all right, go for it. Yeah, so like end of March comes and I get a, an email from a recruiter. She's like, hey, like we'd love to like interview you. You know, I'm a recruiter for like the, the non-tech kids at Twitter. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, this is it. I'm like, this is my chance. I'm like, I think, and this, at this time, I didn't realize like her putting the uh, resume in front of the manager was the reason why I got the interview. I found okay. that out probably during the internship. Okay. So I got the interview, this and that. And then that's when I realized like, oh, my foot's in the door. Like, this is my opportunity to execute. So and how did you find out day. that? So how did you find out that she put your resume in the front door of the recruiter? Like, how'd you find that out? So um, when I got the internship after the whole interview process, mm-hmm. um, I was talking to my manager and he's like, yeah, you know, she put my resume down in front of, in fr- uh, she put your resume down in front of my desk. Oh, so, oh shoot. Dang. I'm like, she physically like put the resume down. That's and then crazy. I remember a couple of days after my resume was like on his desk. I was kind of peeking over. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, this is legit. Like yeah. I got this interview and the internship because of her. Like gotcha. if I didn't go to that event, I probably would you and I probably wouldn't be talking. That's like, crazy. Literally, literally, Twitter, literally. Right? That's crazy. Literally. And so we wouldn't be now we wouldn't be telling this whole story. So okay, wait. So did you how was the interview process? Like when you were interviewing, like how did that go? So kind of after that whole journey of like me attending these small events, I yeah. finally got my foot in the door, which is, which mm-hmm. is probably the hardest step, right? The, the next step in this is just executing. Um, so the interview process, the first round was just a quick call, a 30 minute call with the manager. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was freaking out. I was like, Oh God, I can't mess this up. Like, you know, I can't, yeah. I gotta like execute perfectly on this. So I prepared, you know, like kind of, for non-tech interviews for finance, okay, I just looked up okay. stuff on, on Glassdoor, um, which has great interview tips. Um, dude, and it was a conversation, like kind of like what we're having, just like a straight convo. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is different. Like, this isn't like your ordinary interview. He was just asking about me like, oh, like, where do you go to school? What, have you, what do you kind of do? Like, what do you want to look for in an internship? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. I'm like, this was an easy convo. And at the end of the convo, he's like, yeah, I'll move you up to the second round. I was like, okay like this this works oh, wow. wow works with me so my recruiter reached out again and she's like hey this is like the, the second round is the last one for non-tech kids gotcha so she's like we're just gonna have two 45 minute um video calls so that was kind of intimidating mm-hmm. right so you're meeting okay. with the people of the team 
Gotcha. So my first call was with three people on the team, and my second call was with the other two people. Gotcha. And okay. It was a little more intimidating where they're kind of asking a little tougher questions, right? More yeah. finance related. Your experience was huge. Like, I saw you did X. I saw you did Y. Can you yeah. talk more about it? Can you get into the details of it? Right. So those little events I was telling you about, right? Those that externship, that virtual series that I attended, they were actually talking about those. Gotcha. Right? So, so they looked at those experiences. Okay. So remind us again for those that probably didn't get it. So how did you you found those opportunities, those externships, those virtual things, all through LinkedIn and on online? All on. Yeah. So the first thing I did was was LinkedIn. Check your gotcha. inner circle, right? people who go to your, your school, people who are outside of your school, people who go to top tier schools, yeah, look at their profiles, mm -hmm. see what they've done in the past. Okay. Have, what have they attended? What certifications do they have? Right. Like did they uh -huh. do some sort of like training. Did they, there's things called externships. I was just saying, right. Did they go to those? And then you start learning like, Oh, like I should, let me look these up. And a lot of companies have these small little programs that you could attend. Gotcha. Gotcha. So guys, like a hundred percent. No, I feel that because bro, like you said, you did all this upfront research and preparation. Cause I feel like, look, yeah. the hardest thing is getting your foot in the door because I feel like people like you and me or whoever else out there, like we're able to do well in an interview. Like, yeah, we'll be nervous, but we're able to have a conversation and talk and like, just let your experiences speak for themselves and your personality. Right. But the hardest thing is getting the opportunity to even have the interview. So basically what you did was like that whole prep. Like I feel like 90% of it is the prep and the research and the networking to get yourself even into that interview. And then 10% you let the interview, you let you take over. So exactly. And dude, it's the same thing you were talking about in your last episode, right? Like the yeah. UCLA story where yeah. you took that next step, right? To talk to the Dean, right? Yeah. So you do these small things and they'll add up and they'll help you get through. And, and that's exactly what you're talking about. It's like you flip the switch there, right? You're, you're changing yeah, your mentality. Like I need a new path to get in and this is what I'm going to do to get there. hundred percent. Cause setting, a lot of the times, a lot of the times the traditional route just, just doesn't cut it, especially for people nope. like us, that are, like growing up, whether it be first generation or minorities, like we don't have these connections from the outset. Like we don't have our dads or friends that are like working at these companies that can put in a yeah. word for you. Like we have to go and make those connections ourselves. And that's exactly what you did. So that's, that's crazy. Yeah, dude. That's, that's a big thing. And, 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 and that's a big point that you made is like, we don't have these connections. And yeah. I, you start to realize that when you're in college, it's like, you'll meet all these people and you're like, yeah. Oh, my dad is that he's a VP of this. He's, he's there. He's that. And that yeah. can, it can take a toll on yourself because then you start comparing yourself, which is the wrong thing to do. Don't compare yeah. yourself to others. Just, Realize that, hey, I'm different. I need to set myself up to a higher bar and understand that 100%. I need to do something differently. You're 100%. unique in your own way, right? Yeah. And you will figure out that path to how to, how to get to like the next level. So I didn't, so I didn't start using LinkedIn. Like I was telling him, like, he's the yeah. one who basically <laughs> got me on. When I was in grad school, when I was in professionals, I was in law school my first year. That's when I decided, okay, you know what? Let me try LinkedIn and what, let me try this networking thing that Saman was talking about and all this type of stuff. So basically, but here's the thing. It's never too late, even if you're done with undergrad, to never, to like not start networking. Like networking is key no matter what stage in life you are. But basically the reason why I didn't start LinkedIn because I took advantage. I went to USC, right? I like, even though I wasn't on LinkedIn, I was taking advantage of the resources like crazy. Like there was this instance too. I was, a, I was a political science major. There was this political institute that headed all these internships and all these type of things that they, they connect you with these type of people. They match with these type of people. So I was legit in their office. I was making relationships with them. I was became like best friends with them. Like they, whenever they had like the next best internship, they thought, Oh, wow, gee, let me let me give this to him. Okay. So basically yep. like, even though I wasn't using LinkedIn during that time, I was using my school's resources and I was making connections within the school. Cause that's another thing that a lot of people that's don't big. use. A so lot big. of people do not use the resources at their school, especially if you're, if you're at, at a private institution, I feel like that is one of the main advantages. Like they have so yeah. many resources and if you're paying, if you're taking out loans or whatever it is, like take advantage of those resources. 1000%. Yeah. That's a so big dude, point. Let me tell you about, now let me tell you about my whole. Yeah, I, I, need to, I need to hear your journey. Because it was with you. No, it was with you when I was trying to apply for summer internships for um, when I was in 1L, right? My first year at yeah, law school. Yeah. So that's when I just started getting into, because I realized that the career office just wasn't 
as helpful as it could be, right? So that's what it comes down to. Again, flip the switch. Take matters into your own hands and make your own connections. Don't rely on others to basically food speed your things like that or let opportunities come about. You go ahead and make those opportunities like we talked about. So, bro, I, I made a LinkedIn. I started reaching out to people. I started researching all these, uh, all the companies that I wanted to apply to, the legal internships. Yeah. I made a whole, did you ever make an Excel sheet or did you ever get like that organized? I, or like, I, I got pretty organized, same thing. So that's what I'm saying. You guys got to take, like finding a job or finding an internship is a job in and it of itself. It's, Dude, yeah. networking and finding internship, finding a job is a job in and it of itself. Like it, could, it should not be treated as a nine to five because it is a lot of work that you got to put up, up front that a lot of people don't yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, it's really tiring. So, dude, I was researching all these places. I was looking at people if there's if I know anybody that works there, if they're like alums that that work there, that I can reach out to them. Hey, I want to know your experience. Like, you just reach out, cold email them, trying to find the email, yep. be like, hey, I'm interested in X, Y, Z. Um, I would just love to know your experiences and hear about it or whatever it may be, right? So, dude, I had a whole Excel sheet. I had like a like literally like fifty companies all that I applied oh, to. God. Yeah. Bro, it was like Disney. It was like Facebook. It was like, it was all these top tier companies. Right. And, and like yep. you said, like if you're at a school, like a tier two school or maybe you have all these like tier ones that are just like applying for these internships. So you're kind of like getting yeah. watered out. So basically, bro, my route was a little different than yours. Cause you eventually ended yeah. up getting it, which is amazing. <laughs> right. Like yours, yours actually worked. Oh, I appreciate Cause, the thing it. Is, yeah. Cause the thing is, oh, you went to those events, you put yourself right. out there, you know what I'm exactly. saying? You put yourself out there. So that's another thing you got to take a step further. Right? right. So with me, bro, I was reaching out to people. I was applying. I even applied to Twitter. I was making connections. I was trying to make connections at Twitter, like within the legal teams. That. And you remember that dude? I do. I, I remember that. I couldn't find anyone it's legal. Hard. Like it's so hard, yeah. bro. It's not so even. So literally, I think I even had someone put my resume within the recruiting thing, but yeah. the department of legal, I didn't have anybody within the legal division. Like I didn't have yeah, anyone yeah, in legal yeah. to like kind of vouch for me. I didn't have anyone in legal to kind of like put your eyes on it. Like you had someone specific yeah. in I the. Did. Yeah in the finance, finance intern, yeah. MBA intern. With me, it was just, I didn't have that. I just had people that were not in the legal space. So dude, I literally, rejections, 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 after rejections, after yeah. rejections. Yeah. I kept getting, sometimes, a lot of times, you don't even get any responses from these places because they don't yeah. have the time to respond to you. So you just keep yeah. applying, keep applying. I even talked about this in my last episode. Like I had something set up in New York. I had an interview. Uh, I thought yeah. I had a set, I had thought I had a set in stone. It was a &E networks, right? I thought yeah. I had a set in stone. Nope, it didn't end up working out. Literally rejection, rejection. I'm like, dude, what the hell am I going to do? But basically, yeah. I even explained this in my last episode. Like, I've, I, I reached out to another mentor. Guys, take advantage of finding mentors. Um, make connections. So yeah. I reached out to a mentor who then put my resume in front of, like, this career center or office's place who then found this opportunity. And they're like, oh, this guy, let me go ahead and give this to this guy first. Then it went, my resume went to him. And then that guy was impressed from there. As soon as you see the resume and they get that to your desk and your cover letters and whatnot, then from there, the like, door. he was like, then you, you're in the door. And then from there, I got my internship. And from there, I met the guy who told me to apply to Duke from there. So guys, like all these rejections, I, it, it sucked in the moment. But then I was like, you know what? It ended up working out for a reason. Like all, even yeah. with you, 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 yeah. tr you tried twice. You tried twice. I, literally. Yeah. I remember. You took L's twice, but you didn't give yeah. up and you tried again and you try to do something exactly. different this time. Exactly. And dude, rejections are, are, par are a part of the process. Right? Like, you're going to, like you said, you had probably like 50, like 50 companies set up. So many. Same thing with, same, and I think a lot of people go through this is when you're applying for internships, don't set yourself to just like five companies. Yep. You're, you're going to end up hurting yourself at the end. Apply to every place. And like you said, it's a nine to five job. Applying to places is a nine to five job. Literally. Apply to like a hundred companies in your sophomore year, junior year, just up, keep applying and don't stop. Literally. Out of those hundred, if you apply to a hundred, you'll probably hear back from 10. Out of those 10, you'll probably get two interviews. But that one interview that you get could be it. Exactly. Right? And it could change, it could change your whole life. And it all comes down to researching. Like you research yeah. these events. I research what application internships are available. You research these sites. Like you literally 90% of it is preparation, prep, and research. Yep. And that is a lot of people just don't do that, dude. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people don't realize yeah. to do that. That's what I'm saying. So that's. Yeah. It, uh, and another piece of advice that I have is say, for example, you, you are, you know, you're researching these companies, what they do, yeah. which is really big. 
but you also want to make a name and you like what you were doing is like physically networking, right? Like yeah. actually talking to people, which is really big. So at the end of my internship, my manager, she's, I asked her, you know, like, why'd you choose me? Right. Cause there was oh, a couple of people in interview. I asked her. Yeah. Oh shoot. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I, was like, I was like, and this is my last of my internship, our last one-on-one. And we, Damn. there was two people in front of me who were interviewing and she's like, there was one reason why I chose you. It's like, not because of your skill set, this and that. I'm like, oh, interesting. What was the reason? She's like, it's because you went out of your way to talk to other people at the company. And I was like, oh, literally. Oh, full see circle. that. Do full circle. That is what people have to realize. Like literally she just told you why she took you yep. in. And it wasn't because of what was, yeah, part of it was probably, it wasn't really all what was on your resume. It was because you went out of your way to talk to people within the company to understand the culture and to get into, dude. Exactly. And you know, when she told me that, I got chills. I'm getting chills right now. I was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> this is crazy. She's like, you know, you talk to all these people, like you had an understanding of the company, whereas these other yeah. people who were interviewing, right? They, they just kind of applied and hoped for the best. Yeah. Okay, so you always got to go to the next level because, Bro, it'll make or break you. That's that's dude, the biggest thing. I love it. This is why this is why I wanted you on this episode. Yeah. This is why you're the perfect person to talk about this because I understand the struggle that you went through, the rejections, and how you basically flipped the switch and went out of your way to make those connections. That's dude. yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's physical connections, man, and just setting yourself up for success, right? Just lay a path down. Just if you gotta sit down on a dock and just write out, I have to do one, two, three, four, five to get to X. I'm going to do those steps. I love it. And you'll get there. I love it. So the thing, guys, what I'm hearing from this is stay organized. One, with all your applications, stay organized. Two, research yep. like crazy. Three, reach out to people, try to find events, like whatever it may be. Like research and preparation is key. But now I want to ask you, tell me about, what, okay, now you got. Now you told me about the whole application process, how you yeah. got it, why they chose you. You went out of your way. You made connections. Yeah. Now tell me. How was it while you're actually an intern and like, obviously like some of the things maybe you did were new, like how were you able to cope with like the, the challenges and whatnot? Like yeah. what are some things that you were like, you know, like, yeah, just talk about yeah, your, yeah. why you're actually thinking things that you did different. Yeah, dude. The, so the internship experience was, I mean, it was a whole experience in itself, right? Like this is a tech company you're at, right? So it's, they, you have a lot of fun. But at the same time, you have to remember, let me let, let me not get lost in the fun because the bigger picture of the internship is I need to go full time. Like yeah. I need to get my offer. So a lot of people might get lost in the fun and they lose their offers. So you, yeah. you have to balance it. So during the internship um, and to kind of put it into perspective and not like me bragging as to like how no, no, tough no, it is, but it just puts it into, into view as to how hard it is to get into these companies and what you have to do to make sure you do get in. Yeah. So out of the internship, our first day, they told us number of applicants. I think there was 67,000 applicants globally. Wow. And out of the 67, globally, there was 150 interns that got selected. Wow. About 150. So you're talking about wow. less than like 2% acceptance rate. So put it into perspective. I'm like, oh, shoot. I'm like... I did something for myself that it's, it's not easy to do. It's like, a, you know, plot on my own back, right? Like, you know, I yeah, worked hard yeah. to get here and that's completely fine. Yeah. And when I was looking in the room, you had a bunch of smart kids, man. Like yeah. these kids go to Stanford, MIT, like it could get intimidating. PhDs, intimidating. And it yeah. can be scary, right? I'm coming from St. John's and Queens. It's not the, not the biggest school, right? Mm. Not like the, the, a top tier school, but it's not a bad school. Yeah. And I'm like, how did I get here, right? But the reason I got there is because you work for it, right? You're smart in your own way. And you need yeah. to start, I started to realize that throughout my internship. Um, and there were struggles, right? Like there was new concepts that I had to learn, like modeling on the finance side, just yeah. understanding how to do certain projects. Communication is big, right? That was all new for me. Um, yeah. And it was my first time doing it. And I also found out that I was the only undergrad like finance intern. They usually take MBAs. Oh, whoa. I was like, whoa. I was like, Dude, that's big. Was like, that is I was, big. I was like, oh, shoot. And you start realizing that you could set yourself up to do anything, right? You wow. just need to work towards it. And once you do get them to start realizing like, whoa, I did something pretty big. And what that tells you is like, I can go further. Yeah. Right? You're not going to stop there. I'm going to keep going now. Like if I know I can do this, what more can I do? yeah right so i mean 
internship was tough, right? There was yeah. projects that I didn't know how to do, but I learned on the way. And you have yeah. people who will support you throughout the internship. 100%. And I mean, that's amazing. Like, mashallah, like you ended up getting the offer. Appreciate so that's it. so yeah. sick. And you were able to put in the work. Like you, like you said, you yeah. made relationships. I remember, remember that you had to do some project at the end and then we made like a little creative video. Oh remember that? yeah, dude. So, I, so, go ahead, go ahead. You can, okay. You can so no, so, so, so no. So basically I just remember, um, he had to make like a quick video. Right. And then we were just saying like, you, you guys got to go kind of like outside the, I don't know if anybody else did this, but like, you got to be kind of like like you know set yourself apart like do something creative or, or if they give you like a project like figure out ways or like put in extra work or just kind of like go outside the box so basically yeah tell them what the project like how we what did we do and did anybody else do that yeah what we ended up yeah doing? yeah no no one did it dude so this is this was your idea i remember yeah. so we were sitting we were in twitter i think we we're in the cafeteria area dude we yeah were we, were, like, we used we to were... eat all the snacks bro we yeah dude. literally man when <laughs> i was all hungry i would hit them so mom i'm like bro please man i'm I'm running i have no food like, let me get some twitter snacks like bro dude i i know from I twitter that. is listening to this right now but dude. dude people come to twitter just to eat the food the food is literally. honestly a big a big perk these tech companies is just like and we were chilling at good. nighttime, bro. We were chilling doing yeah. work at nighttime, playing ping pong and whatnot, because you had like you had access. So, dude. Yeah, yeah. All right, so go it's, for it. My bad. Tell it. Go for it. Nah, yeah. So uh, as I was, we were sitting in the commons area, and I'm like, yo, I have this. Like, I have to do my final presentation, mm -hmm. and there's gonna be a bunch of people attending, recruiters, your managers, directors, like all these people attending, and a final presentation in terms of is big in your internship is big because if you're in your junior year it could mean a full-time offer yeah they might want to offer your position so i was like i need to like do a good presentation you're like yo why don't you do like a, a video and i'm like what do you mean and you're like just do something different and yeah. i was like okay i was like i i was like how do you want to do like a video and you did like this you dude i remember you like sketched it real quick yeah, at that yeah, moment yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. we're gonna do this scene this scene this scene really quick and you made it happen right yeah um it was like a quick like crazy view of like sf like yeah, a drone yeah, footage yeah. of sf yeah you had like these awesome transitions and i was like me walking through the doors the doors yeah of twitter yeah, yeah. and i used that to open my presentation and so everyone sick. was shook so and sick. they're like, who made this? I'm like, I have a buddy. Like, who, who, <laughs> no, you, you should have said this. you made it, bro. You should have no, said I you couldn't take credit. I couldn't take credit. I was like, I have a friend who's like awesome in this stuff. Like he did this whole thing. He came up with the idea. So they're like, whoa, you're like we need him to make videos for us. Like, I'll, let, I'll let you know. I'll <laughs> Shit, didn't take me for legal, but shoot, give me on the content yeah. team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the, the product team, the, the production yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no other intern did that, right? Yeah. It was it was different and I, i'm gonna say it again right you flip the switch so you're doing something completely different that no other intern did and they they still watch the video to this day that's like, crazy Yo, what's your what's the you still have the video saved i'm like yeah that this go we have like links at work yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just type in a link and bring them to the video and they still watch it dude that is so amazing so dude yeah so that's like you, like you said go out of your way like and even if one thing that you said like all these things that you're going to be doing within your internship even though that they're new like you still found ways to figure it out. You probably asked for help. Like guys, ask for help 1000%. Like a lot of the times when you start an internship, like you don't know what you're doing. Like even until this day, yeah. let me tell you, let me tell you, bro. Let me tell you my experience with my yeah, first internship yeah. at, a, at a law firm, right? This was last summer that the one that I ended up getting, right? The yeah. one that basically changed the trajectory of my life because my supervisor attorney, he told me to apply to do all this. Like he basically changed the trajectory of where I was headed. So that's why it was one. It meant it was, it, it all happened for a reason. And two, bro, I was, this was the first time I was in like an actual law, like law firm internship. And like, I was actually like, they, this dude was literally like the, like the practice of law. Like I'm just a freaking first yeah. year. I just literally just did. That's I scary. barely know. Yeah. I barely know. He's making me draft literally motions, which are just court documents, like for a procedure God. that you send to the court that you're making your argument for. And I'm like, I literally had no idea, dude, the first day, the first day, first day he hands me, he hands me a, a case, he hands me a client, he's like, draft a blank and blank motion. I'm just thinking to myself, I don't even know what this means, like, what do you mean yeah. by this? Like, dude, And I'm like yeah. scared, I'm scared to ask him because, bro, he's like, he's like the senior and he's basically asking me like, yo, you do this, yeah. right? So I'm like, like, I'm supposed to make his life easier, basically, but I, bro, that was the hardest thing because I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what one he even asked me. So yeah. first I like, you got to get help from the juniors, like the ones that have kind of gone through this. So don't be afraid to ask help from them. If you're too scared to ask help from the senior and three, bro, let me tell you, I don't think I've told anybody this. I don't even think my mom knows this, 
<laughs> but that first week, because I didn't know how to do it, I didn't know what I was doing. Literally, bro, that first week or even during the rest of the time yeah. when I didn't know what was going on, I literally came in the office at like 6 a.m. when no oh one would literally. God. And that's what I'm saying. The I don't grind. tell like I, literally. It was literally the grind. I don't even I haven't told anybody this or shared the story with anybody. But basically, bro, if I don't understand something, I made sure to put in those extra hours. Bro, I was in the office at 6 a.m. No one, no one in sight. Everything was dark. The lights are off. The sun is barely up. And I am researching and I am putting in those extra hours before my attorney comes in just to have something for him and like figure out because I know it's going to take me a longer time to understand what's going yeah. on. Cause I don't know what's going on. So I came in 6am. I was trying to understand what does that need to do? I was figuring out, I was reaching out to people. I was researching, I was Google, whatever it is, dude, yeah. I put in that work extra hours inside the office, outside of the office because everything was new to me. So for those yeah. people that are listening, if something is new and if you don't know how to do it or whatnot, Show them your work ethic. I feel like they, they, they literally like I left like a crazy impression with them. Like that guy's my mentor now, and he just wants me to see me succeed in everything that I do. I think it's because, bro, he saw my work ethic that I was putting in, and I don't think I never told him I came in early, right? So the yeah. person that's usually the front desk of the law firm, like he usually comes in the earliest. He realized that day, so he came in this, to my office. He, <laughs> yeah, he came early. into my office. He's he's like, oh, he's like, nice job, Waji. I see you coming in early. Yeah. I see you came in early, and then I think the attorneys heard that too. So, it's like you don't need to show Small it or thing. tell anybody. You don't need to show it or tell anybody you came in early. Do it for yourself and do it for your own work ethic, and eventually your work ethic will speak for itself, dude. Even exactly. even right now at my current internship, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, dude. Yeah. So I got another thing right now that I'm doing right, and it's an out of law firm. It's at a bigger law firm in LA. I have no idea, bro. This this attorney sending me stuff to like draft agreements yeah. and contracts that I've never done in my life. And I'm usually like all the other interns are barely putting like they're just doing like that nine to five, whatever it may be. The bare minimum, right? But I am literally doing 12 hour days, 12 hour shifts. That's why I've barely been able to post on social media. Like yeah. I kid you not. Like I've been even asked my mom, like she said, my face is starting, my, my body, my face is starting to get pale because of it. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to say. If I don't understand something, I'm going to put in those extra hours to make sure I understand it and to make sure that they see that the work ethic that I'm putting in, because those little things will speak volume, bro. So I'm sure you but, did that too. Of course, dude. That's, and that's a big part. I want to ask you a quick question. How is that feeling? Like once you, once you submitted the work and you saw there, I mean, that feeling I can only imagine is like, that feeling is feelings. amazing, but you got to realize like, I'm still, of course, you're going to make mistakes throughout it all. Like yeah. the whole process is a learning That's process. Good. But at the end of the day, just show them that you're working hard. Like, dude, if that my turn, like whatever I turn into him, he's like, oh, like this is, this is not, even if it's not good or whatever, maybe or it can, obviously everything needs a little bit of improvement, but he's able to see like, damn, this guy spent a lot of time on it. I love his work ethic. And this is exactly the type of attitude and character that I want someone to come in. And like they'll eventually learn the law. They'll eventually learn how to do these things over time with practice. Cause that's what it is. It's like practice of everything. Yeah. But I know that this guy has a work ethic to do it. So why not bring him on my team? Cause I know eventually he'll learn how to do it, but I love this drive that he has. I love this motivation, that push that he had to come in early and figure things out and to put in those extra hours. So dude, no matter whoever's listening out there, when you start a new internship, like everything's going to be new. Don't be intimidated. Don't be scared. At the end of the day, put in that work ethic. And even you, like you were like, had so many people that were like coming from Stanford and, and PhDs yeah, and MBAs, bro. That's crazy. Dude, you hit on it perfectly. Honestly, is, is work ethic is so big is when you go into an internship, like even right now, like honestly me full time, I transitioned over to a new team within the same like finance yeah. team. I have no idea what I'm doing and that's okay. That's you just got to put in the hours, right? So I put in, same thing, I'll put in 12 hours. If I have to work till 2 a.m., I will work till 2 a.m. 100%. And the, and the thing is, like you said, is the work speaks for itself. Yeah. So like I, this last couple of weeks, I've been just putting in a lot of hours because we're going through like a busy cycle. And uh -huh. a lot of the stuff that I'm learning is new. I really don't know how to do it. I put in the hours, I put in the work, I ask questions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Yeah. The yeah. people that are here... As long as you first make an effort, you put in your time to learn it, figure it out. Yeah. If you still yeah. can't figure it out and you put in the time, then you ask the question. Yeah. And they'll know that you put in the time. They're like, all right, let me help this person out. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with asking questions. Exactly. Help. Exactly. So, I mean, the work speaks for itself. It's like I had my manager. He's like, you know, I preach. I know you put in a lot of hours. The work is awesome. Like you're above your level. It's not like, ah, like this. It all works out. Yeah. hundred like percent. got to grind so so guys, we've so far we've covered the whole application process. We've covered like how to do these little things of research, a preparation, how to get your foot in the door, 
And then obviously while you're there, how to kind of show what your worth is, trying to show your hard work, your work ethic, ask questions, but at the end of the day, don't be intimidated, don't be scared. Um, I think that answers all my questions. Do you have anything that you guys want to say, whoever is listening? Like, like I've, there's a lot of takeaways to take from this episode and I'm there's hopefully that they did. But if there's anything you want to say to end on one note, what would it be? Dude, this could probably turn into like multiple episodes. There's exactly, just so much right? you can talk about with this stuff. We might have to do a part two. We might have to do a part two. You I, never know. Let me know. I, I mean, I have so much more advice to give. There's just 100%. so many routes you can go. Um, 100%. But I'd definitely be down to do a part two if you want. But I was going to say the last thing I really want to say is a lot of people like in our community are like people of color, minorities. Yep. They're afraid to like put themselves out. And that was me. Like yes. I used to be like, ah, I'm not good enough for this. Not even worth applying. Screw it. Like I'm just going to leave it. Yeah. Don't do that. Do not do that because you have your own talent. Like you're unique in your own way. You just got to figure out how can you express it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And just set up a, a different path for yourself. So my biggest thing is just apply, 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 reach out to people. Don't be afraid to reach out. Who cares if they don't reply to you, yeah. right? Reach out to someone else. Yeah. You're bound to get a reply from someone. 100%. Continue to just keep pushing to like, throw yourself out there. Like, even if you're shy, even if it's uncomfortable, I, I'm a shy person. Networking mm-hmm. for me is really hard. It is. It very but is. I even for me. Force myself to do it. Force yourself to do uncomfortable things and you'll succeed. 100%. That's, that's my biggest piece of advice. Damn, man. I, that was honestly, you could not have said it better. That was so beautiful because we're so scared to put ourselves out there or to just even like, like we say, oh, we don't have these credentials. Like, but you said, yeah. you, bro, you said it so beautifully. I don't even want to butcher it. <laughs> that was amazing. All right, Salman, tell them, tell them where, where can they find you at your Twitter? What's your Twitter handle, bro? You gotta come uh, on. Shoot, you gotta... My Twitter handle, my Twitter handle is at Salman, S-A-L-M-A-N-B-U-T-T underscore zero three. Give me a follow. And if you guys want to reach out for questions, or honestly, if they reach out to you with questions, I'm happy to help anyone. Honestly, like, I think that's the whole point of this, right? Like we want to yeah. help others find success and I'll be there to help anyone, mentor anyone, whatever it may be. I love it, guys. See, this is what we're doing with this podcast, with this series. We're trying to hook you guys up with these advice and at the same time trying to give you guys aspirations and people to look up to like Salman who will give you advice and give you mentorship. But basically, man, that's all I have. This was amazing. Um, And if, again, I'll have his information in the bio below for those that are watching the video. But um, that's it for me, man. I just, I love it. I love this conversation. I appreciate it. And and I just want to give you, you know, shout out to what you're doing right now. This whole, the whole podcast series. I think it's something we need um it, it's a big yeah. thing and, and it gets people to come out of their shells and understand like oh these are people in our community who are doing big things so kudos to you man i, 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 I appreciate like you here. appreciate you you're the best first guest to have on this episode there's so many advice to take from this and we'll see if there's maybe we'll have a part two with you and next episode yeah, i think we're gonna, next episode i think i'll be talking about standardized tests and whatnot which Ooh, is a that's whole big. another that's a big story. thing so you guys yeah. stay tuned yeah. for that but always, man, at the end of the day, everything, no matter what you do in life, at the end of the day, it comes down to flipping that switch, which you did, Salman. So amazing to you, man. Congrats to you, bro. All right, y'all. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Salman. It's been a pleasure. As always, guys, much love. Stay blessed. And always, always, always stay beautiful.